Hello, my name is Patrick Toman Sowey, and I'm a pretty typical 11-year-old boy. I like skateboards, bikes, and playing with my friends. One of the games we used to play a lot was war. When the History Day contest was announced, there wasn't any question in my mind about the topic. It had to be war. I do World War II, the whole war. Then I read some books on World War II and found out that it was terrible and tragic and killed millions of people. I knew I couldn't cover the whole war in 10 minutes, but my own grandparents were in the war, so I decided to focus on my family, their conflicts, and their compromises during World War II. She was 19. He was 22. She was beautiful and talented, and on her way to becoming an opera singer, he was just out of college with a bright future in business ahead of him. It was 1943, the middle of World War II, and he had joined the army to fight for his country. They married in spite of the war, and she followed him from Montana to California to be close to him before he went overseas. Then one day he shipped out to fight somewhere in the north of Italy, and she went back to Montana to wait for his letters. He joined the conflict raging in Europe. She made the compromises at home and put her singing career in the background. He wrote every week from a different battlefield. She wrote every week that she missed him and that he was going to be a father. And then the baby was born, a little boy. And on the day after the baby was born, she received a letter from the army saying that her husband had been killed in Italy. She was my grandmother, Janet. He was my grandfather, Jack. He died in the conflict. She made the compromises to adjust to life without him. I interviewed my grandmother to find out some of her own personal conflicts and compromises during that time. Was it scary when you found out your husband was killed on the beach? Well, it wasn't scary, Patrick, but it was a terrible shock because I had thought that nothing like that would happen to him. I knew he was going to come back, but he didn't. What effect did his death have on you? Quite an effect. At first, of course, uh, I just thought, well, I didn't believe it. And then I thought that my life was over, that there just, that was the end for me. Do you have anything else that you, w that you would like to share with me? When I said that I was going to marry uh, your grandfather, everybody gave me advice and said, oh, you really shouldn't do that because uh, if you get married and he goes overseas and, and uh, he might be killed and then you'd be left a widow. And, and I thought, that isn't going to happen to me. And they said, but what, what, if, what if you had a baby and he didn't come back? And I said, oh, that isn't going to happen to me. But of course it did. How did the war change your life? Everything that happens to us, Patrick, changes our life one way or another. And, of course, this is a very traumatic thing that changes one's life. What were some of the compromises you had to make when your husband was shipped out? Well, of course, I had to give up school. And, um, and I went home then to live with my mother. That was uh, a compromise. And here I was, a married woman expecting to live with my husband. But he was gone, and, I, and we had no home, so... Uh, I went home to live with my mother and wait for my baby to be born there, so that was a compromise. When was the last time you saw your husband? Well, it was in the summer of 1943, and uh, at that time he was stationed in, in Missouri, and he had some leave coming, so we had planned to go home for the length of the leave. I don't remember now. It might have been two or three weeks. And, uh, but I hadn't been feeling very well, so he thought that I should go home first and go see the doctor and find out if there was anything wrong, and, um, and then he would follow as soon as his, his leave was ready. Then he called me to find out um, how I was, and, and so I told him I'd been to see the doctor and, and that I had some news for him, and he said, well, I'm afraid I have some news for you, too. And he said, what is your news? And I said, we're going to have a baby. And he was thrilled to death. And then I said, what is your news? And he said, well, this isn't so good. He said, I'm being shipped overseas. 
My grandmother made the compromises she had to make after her husband was killed in the conflict of war. My other grandfather lived through the war to tell a different story of conflict and compromise. He was born in Ireland and stationed in Birmingham, England during the war, fighting with the Allies against Germany's invasions. His wife and child followed him to England, but there were periods of a year or more when they didn't see each other. The conflicts were daily occurrences, and my grandmother lived days at a time in air raid shelters, wondering if she and her child would be the targets for the next bomb dropped. It was frightening and horrible to see the bodies of friends and neighbors lying in the streets. It was living in the midst of conflict and making the compromises necessary to adjust on a daily basis. My grandfather talked to me about his own conflicts and compromises during World War II. Was it scary to fight? It was scary. It's very scary for anybody to fight in a war. You are always afraid. What kind of problems did the family have in England? When you went to a, a store, a bakery, you had to line up for hours, say from 5 o'clock in the morning till the store would open at 9 so that you could purchase about three cupcakes and a loaf of bread. What were your feelings when the war was over? When the war was over, to be quite honest, I was slightly disappointed because during the war, we got clamatized to the ways of war. And it was just as difficult after the war to adjust to civilian life as it was to adjust to army life. The thing I missed the most about the service and the Air Force were my buddies. Because when you're with a certain amount of people for a certain length of time, you become very close. And your feelings during wartime are so much different to non-war time because you never know the next morning if you're going to be there, you're all going to be together, so you live one day at a time. Do you think wars accomplish anything? There's nothing, there's nothing I can think of good that is accomplished by war. I think that things could be settled in a peaceful way instead of sacrificing millions of lives. Papa said that war really doesn't serve any purpose, and I wonder if he's right. There are families at home who have to compromise their standards of living just to survive during wartime, and there are men and women who lose their lives in the conflict. I never knew my grandfather Jack because he was killed in the conflict of World War II. So even I have to compromise and be satisfied with stories and pictures of him. I have the Purple Heart given to my grandmother after he was killed instead of a relationship with him. It must be the same in every war. The conflict of war means generations of compromises for the families involved. Real war has nothing to do with toy guns that make loud bangs. World War II was a real war that killed my grandfather and changed the whole structure of my family. My family in World War II. The actual conflict lasted five years. The compromises are still being made today.